Hi, welcome back to the SwiftFox build project channel and another uh, build update video of the KitFox. So I finished the end caps, uh, sanding them down to shape and I'm uh, really happy with how they've come out. I have the horizontal and the elevator just hanging up on a wall over here. So I'm just gonna show the vertical and the rudder, which is probably the more interesting out of them anyway. So this one went a lot better than last time. I didn't hit any foam at any point. I had plenty of high sol on there and I was able to sand down to the, the shape I wanted. Got a nice uh, kind of continuous line from the front of the vertical all the way over the top to the back side of the rudder here. And then the, the curve on both sides, it's relatively uniform uh, front to back, uh, as much as you can get kind of handmade and, and hand sanded. So uh, really happy with how they came out this time. And uh, yeah, was kind of moving on uh, with the build. Now, before I move on to the next uh, quick update, I do want to point out um, a mistake I made earlier in the build. And I had I had realized it uh, quite a while ago, but in sanding these end caps uh, on top of the vertical and the rudder, it really uh, kind of re-emphasized maybe how bad the problem was or the, the error I had made. So the mistake was I never actually trimmed these fairings back. I did trim the top and bottom of them when they needed to be fit in, but I never trimmed this edge here. Um, I think I naively just thought it was it was fine and could go in. If I remember back, in fact, these wooden ribs, they did have kind of relief notches around the front of them to accommodate the fairing coming on the front. And I did extend that relief in the rib all the way back to here so that the uh, fairing could go on. I'm like 99% sure what I really should have done was trimmed the fairing back to where that relief was. Um, and the, the reason is, is this fairing, if you imagine it's kind of C-shaped, but it's kind of clamping in at the end. Um, and then this wooden rib is coming here. And so you now have this awkward kind of connecting and curve. It's not like one continuous line, kind of what I have up the top here. And when fabric is laid here, it's going to like sink in and then come out again. It's going to look pretty bad. I don't know if it has an aerodynamic, like a huge aerodynamic negative impact, um, but it's definitely going to look terrible. I have been thinking about ways to fix it. Um, one thing I was thinking of is if I just filled this whole outer outer part of the uh, fairing, both sides, and then just sanded it down. Um, that's a lot of fill to do. I don't know how structural that would end up being, and it would just be a lot of work. The other thing is that this edge isn't actually straight. If you do look at it, it's kind of wavy. Uh, on the back side here, there's actually kind of a notch taken out of one of them. So um, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it would look better, but it's still, you'd see through the fabric that it, it wasn't really nice. The other way I've been thinking about fixing it is actually in place, just trimming it back to whatever it needs to be. Um, kind of uh, roughly guessing it and kind of looking at it, maybe about half inch back here. So I could trim down that line on both sides. That's probably going to be the easiest way to fix this. Um, but I am concerned about these access holes here then for the hardware to mount the rudder uh, onto the vertical stabilizer. So if I come back a half inch here, it doesn't leave a lot of material here on this side of the hole. Now, again, not an insurmountable uh, uh, problem. I mean, I could, I have some off cuts of the fiberglass I could glue in on the back to kind of strengthen that place. Um, but I've also been thinking about maybe relocating this hole even further forward um, so that, you know, to access the rudder and take it off, you would deflect the rudder fully and then come in. So similarly, I would, you know, uh, glue on a piece of fiberglass on the backside here, put a, a little bit on the front, fill it, treat it all, and then redo the hole kind of uh, on this side. Both ways are going to be a lot of work at the end, um, but I'm not sure if uh, I can cover this without dealing with it. Uh, you know, it's definitely going to look pretty bad, and whatever uh, aerodynamic impact it could have, I don't really, I don't really want to test. This fairing actually isn't too bad, to be fair. I might just leave this as is. It just needs a bit of a, a, a sanding uh, on the front uh, edge here, but it, its lines are fine. There's no kind of coming in that's happening, so I'm just going to leave this as is. But uh, this one definitely needs um, needs to be taken care of. So that's going to happen sometime in the future, um, maybe when there's a bit of a, a lull in some other work. So I have been working on the rudder pedals, so let's take a look at those. So I've made a start on the rudder pedals as well. 
I think I'm maybe 50-ish percent through getting them all assembled. And I did come into this with a lot of trepidation, maybe even a lot of hesitation. I could have started these quite a while ago. But a lot of that fear was from reading and hearing from other builders and the difficulty they had getting uh, their rudder pedals finished. Seems they had a, there's a lot of complaints or uh, problems with kind of the fit and the finish and, and um, you know, how to get these uh, working properly. So even before I started on these, I kind of got everything laid out and then I called my friend Leon, who uh, has helped before in various parts of the build related to, uh, you know, metal components together. And, um, you know, he's a CNC machine shop uh, owner. Got him down to kind of look over what I was about to do and maybe uh, impart any advice he'd have or maybe some alternative ways uh, to get kind of the job done in still uh, a high quality way. And I'm really glad I did that because he definitely gave me a lot of great advice that I've been able to use. And so I would say it's not been too bad as of, as of up to now. Um, for example, uh, sanding down to get these bearings on the torque tube has been relatively fine. Um, his advice there was, you know, use a very high grit and uh, go easy. You don't want to take too much of the powder coat off and do a lot of uh, test fitting, dry fitting, keep going. They're at a point now where I think once they're greased up, they're, they're going to be uh, pretty okay. And really the next uh, aspect I have to do here is kind of match drill for these outboard uh, pedals. Uh, otherwise, the, it's pretty much all here ready to go. The one area of this that I've not made any progress on and I haven't been able to make progress on is um, putting the actual pedal onto the bracket. So maybe to quickly describe that here. So I have a pedal, there's this plastic bearing, and then there's a tube here. So this bearing goes through this tube then the pedal clamps down on either end of the bearing and then the rotational movement is, uh, is through there. So um, media problem is these bearings don't actually fit into these tubes, um, likely because there's now powder coat from the process of creating these pedals inside of here. But I also think that these are uh, slightly larger bearings than the, even the diameter of the hole here. Uh, in talking to Leon, his suggestion was instead of, you know, s removing material from the inside of this tube or reaming it, that instead uh, sand this bearing down. Uh, and the reason is that if you think about the location of these rudder pedals in the airplane, they're down by your shoes. And in Vancouver, it rains quite a lot. So I'm likely to be hopping into the airplane uh, every now and again with wet shoes and that water is going to come onto the rudder pedals and potentially get into these areas. So his suggestion was to leave any corrosion prevention in place that was there. So the powder coat is corrosion prevention and instead uh, bring these down to size to fit in. So uh, I am going to sand uh, all of these to fit in. The other thing we talked about is um, I've heard uh, complaints from other builders about, you know, they sand this bearing down, it fits through the, the tube nicely. And then once they put the, uh, the pedal on and torque it all down, then the whole um, uh, mechanism gets stiff. Um, there's a suggestion that it's that the uh, plastic bearing under, under the compression or torque or whatever, the bolt and not have been on it, is uh, distorting the middle of it here. And so then that is kind of catching the sidewalls of the tube. Leon uh, was saying that because this tube is actually welded on here in the middle, that it's unlikely the, the internals of the tube are even circular anymore. Um, the side effect or outcome of welding is that the metal does bend and twist and basically change shape. So while the ends here are likely perfect circles, the middle here isn't, or likely isn't. So uh, what we've come up with there is actually to see about sanding this into kind of a dumbbell shape. So in the middle here, we'll sand a little bit more and you know, that will give some uh, leeway for the uh, middle part of the tube here not being circular anymore. So when it does get torqued down and it does distort, it's not hitting uh, the sidewall. So uh, I actually haven't been able to get started on these because um, I do need a really long bolt to be able to chuck it into the drill press. The bolts that mount these on, they only give about a half inch out the back of it, which isn't enough to, um, to uh, chuck in. So I've ordered a really long bolt and uh, waiting for that to arrive from Aircraft Spruce. The other thing is of the four uh, plastic bearings I got, this one actually is, um, has a manufacturing defect. 
Uh, it looks like the way these are made is they're drilled from both sides to meet in the middle. And this one on one end, it's been drilled crooked. So I can't actually pass a bolt through through here. And on uh, this end, the, the hole is closer to one edge. So it's not, uh, it's not squared up and wouldn't be squared up on the pedal. So I'm just gonna buy a new one from Kitfox. Uh, eventually when I have a few other things I need to buy and, uh, and, and uh, deal with it then. So that's kind of the rudder pedal assembly. Uh, we should go over and take a look at the floorboards. Um, I will show quick over here. Um, I have an infusion going on. It's just finished and uh, I'm ready to pull it off um, to uh, cut it up. But uh, let's go over to the fuselage and have a look at uh, the floorboards. So we're up here at the firewall end of the fuselage, kind of looking at the floorboards in the, uh, the cockpit area. And specifically what I want to look at is the floorboard here where the rudder pedals are going to mount. So a complaint I've seen uh, from other builders is that, you know, on the, on the assembly table, the rudder pedals are all fine. Everything's worked together. Things are smooth. But then once they install them into the fuselage, they bind up, they're, they become stiff. And the reason for that is that um, they need to use washers in certain places to keep the alignment um, of, the, of the rudder pedals uh, correct. So what I've done here is I've just put down my straight edge and I can see that there's five rails that the rudders are going to attach to. So one, two, three, and then four and five on the other side. And I can see that from the far side here all the way, one, two, three, four, they're fine they touch the straight edge, they're all uh, on an equal plane. But this one here, the outermost side on the pilot side is actually about 330 seconds lower. And you can see I can push the, uh, the straight edge down. So that's likely gonna be a problem for me when I'm installing my rudder pedals that that one is uh, lower than the others. So you know I know I'm gonna to need to either stack some washers or make a shim uh, for that particular one. So I think this is something worth checking before you know you start installing your rudder pedals. The other piece of advice I saw from another builder was to uh, have the floorboard out when you're installing the rudder pedals. Uh, the instructions do say to put the floorboard in, put the rudder pedals on, and then like back drill, back drill through the rail, the floorboard uh, into the, or sorry, drill through the bracket, through the floorboard, through the rail. Um, they, their experience was that when the floorboard was in, it was hard to see where the center of this rail was. And so you could get your hole drilled you know, too far and not be able to put a, a nut on the back of it. So I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna keep the floorboard out. I'll get the rudder pedals uh, uh, put into place. I'll drill through the, uh, the rails in the frame. And then it's as easy as taking the kind of rudder pedal assembly out, putting the floorboard in and then back drilling uh, for the floorboard. And that should make sure um, everything kind of stays still uh, in alignment. You can see that the wood uh, floorboards are still in here. So the carbon fiber infusion I was doing, I just showed you that's where those uh, floorboard pieces are going to come out of. And I also started working on the extended baggage floorboard. So let's, let's have a look at that right now. So seeing as I was working on making the cockpit floorboards out of carbon fiber, I thought I should also look at what the uh, baggage compartment was looking like. So I got the extended uh, baggage option from Kitfox and the way the floorboards come uh, in that configuration is it, here uh, in the fuselage right now. It's two pieces that are split kind of lengthways down the middle. Now the standard baggage option I think goes to about here where this uh, piece of framing is. And then the extended one goes back to here. So you get maybe 18 inches or so uh, more space. And now I've had the uh, baggage sack in and out a couple of times as well for test fitting purposes. And it's really, really cool. Lots of Velcro straps to attach it to the frame and keep it uh, keep its shape. And I've had the floorboards uh, in and out a couple of times. So in looking at the floorboards that Kitfox provides, um, I am gonna try and make uh, the floorboards out of carbon fiber, uh, mostly just to see if I can, but also because I'm not really happy with how these floorboards seem to be working inside in the fuselage. So there are a number of tabs kind of in the frame for the floorboards to sit on. 
And there are a number of tabs here where this frame is that the these floorboards aren't contacting. They're maybe quarter quarter inch off. And so while it's probably all right to affix front and back, this is going to like rattle all the time. So I'd prefer if the floorboard was secured down into as many uh, tabs as there are. Uh, and another thing uh, that I don't really like is the floorboard, you know, floorboards put together, um, they're a little bit narrow for the tabs on the sides here. So I've played with how they're placed and the hole in this tab is always quite close to the edge of the board on either side. So I'm just a little concerned about putting holes through and bolts down and like it, it, them being at the edge of the board. So uh, the way I'm gonna do the carbon fiber floorboards um, is I'm gonna make it out of two pieces still, but instead of being split lengthways down the middle, I'm gonna split it across here. So you have a floorboard where kind of same shape as say the standard uh, baggage floorboard, and then one piece back here. And that way they'll all, both floorboards will interface with all of the tabs that are on, uh, on its side. The other thing I'm gonna do then is also make it a quarter inch wider in this section here. Um, the reason for that is to accommodate the tabs here on the side and to make sure the any holes in the floorboard are as far in as possible. I've checked uh, this with the baggage sack. It looks like it will take, it'll probably take somewhere between a quarter and a half inch more width, but I'm just gonna do a quarter inch for ease of getting the boards in and out. So uh, that's what I'm gonna to do uh, to change these up. I'm also gonna make a, a floorboard section for this area here. Um, Brian Bowen in his build videos, he extended his baggage area even further uh, back to here because the there are tabs in place. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that yet, uh, but I'm just going to at least make the kind of floorboard plate that I would need if I'm gonna because it's just a little bit of extra room in the same infusion. Um, so I'll just have it there as an option and you know prior to covering I can decide if I if I want to use it or not. So that's kind of the thinking I'm doing on the baggage floorboards. So once I get the cockpit floorboards uh, pulled out of this mold and checked, um, I can start working on the uh, baggage one. Now I have had a couple of failed infusions since that first one that I ha uh, had on the video. Um, various things kind of went wrong, cures didn't happen, etc. So uh, I think I've figured it out for this one and hopefully it's it's okay. Um, if not, I maybe just have to rethink trying, trying the carbon fiber at all, just stick with the wood, but um, we'll see how we go. That's I think gonna be it for this update video. As you can see, there's a kind of a lot of things running in parallel, um, but they're all eventually gonna tie into, um, you know, getting the uh, rudder pedals uh, kind of installed in on the front. So I'm gonna to get to this carbon fiber infusion, pull it out of the mold, see how it looks, get it, start getting it trimmed up. And then as the parts come in from aircraft spoofs, I can continue working on the rudder pedals. So I'm gonna get back to that. Uh, if you're still here, thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope to see you in the, the next update. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See ya.